Today we're going to be installing a flange window and a wall that already has zip system sheathing installed. The goal here is to connect the WRB of our wall to the WRB of our window to make one continuous environmental separator. The first step in that separation is we're going to prep the sill pan below the window. To start, we're going to bevel the sill. And there's two different ways that we can do that. One, we can use a piece of cedar bevel siding like we're going to do here, creating a positive slope to the outside. Two, we could also do this in rough framing. So we could add a five degree pitch to the outside in the rough framing sill. That'll give us a positive slope to the outside in the event that we ever have moisture. We'll take just a couple roofing nails, just something to just something to tack it into place and hold it for the moment. Now that we have this sill installed, the next thing is going to be our stretch tape. For me, that starts with a center line layout and layouts up each jam to the point that I need that tape to go. That way I don't make any mistakes on placing my tape. So I'll mark center on the sill, and then I'll mark six inches up each side. And the reason I'm going six inches up each side is that gives me enough to turn the corner, and it gives me a good point of reference where I'm not trying to push just a small piece of tape around the corner. I want it up high enough that I get good adhesion. Okay, let's talk sill pan flashing. We can do this in a couple different ways. The first way, our preferred method, is we'll use a stretchable tape that will flash from the sill out and onto the wall. It also will allow us to turn the corner up both sides so that we're able to go from our layout line down, around, and back up to our layout line in one piece. If you don't have the stretch tape, you can go with a straight tape, a straight flashing tape, and you can achieve the same thing, but this time you're going to be using more pieces. Let me show you how that works. First, I'm going to cut a uh, bow tie shaped piece of the flashing tape, and this will be our piece that actually bridges that connection from our sill to our wall. And you can notice here that I'm using the Huber family of products. Whatever manufacturer you're working with, my recommendation is stick with one manufacturer. That way you have one rep or one warranty to deal with if you ever have an issue. You won't run into, well, their tape isn't designed to work with our system or anything of the sort. So there's our first step. We're gonna flash the pan. Second, we're gonna cut a V or a triangle out of both sides of this six inch piece. And then we're able to apply this so that when we turn the corner, we're getting rid of a lot of that material. And we've now taken care of, you'll see after I put this last vertical piece on, we've taken care of what would have been a pinhole gap. And now we're able to go vertically We'll make one cut back this direction, fold in. Now that we have these three pieces of tape in place, we're managing the water at our edge. We want to take one more run of the tape in the back to protect that sill as far back as we can. And then the whole system will get rolled in place. This is a pressure sensitive adhesive and we need that pressure to make it adhere to our substrate. Now we're going to install my preferred method the stretch tape. We have that layout line on the center here. We also have a center line layout on our tape. That center line means that we'll end up with the same excess or the same amount after we try to turn the corners. So I like to peel the tape one side at a time. This can be a little unwieldy to do by yourself. Uh, on a larger window, you certainly wouldn't try it by yourself. I'll peel this tape back. We'll peel all the way down trying to keep it from sticking to itself or anything else. So now when we open up, we're going to start on that center line and we're going to start most of the way back in the, in the opening. And it gives us the ability to lay it each direction, tack it temporarily over there, work our way back this direction. Before I really make that turn, I like to take my speed square push it right into the corner so that I know that I don't have 
a big rounded corner. I'll push up. Once we're to this point, I'm able to turn starting at the corner and work my way out. And you may see it start to try to return to its original position, but once you give it a little bit of pressure, it'll stay where you want it. And all we're looking for is to shed that water from the sill out and down. So same thing in this corner. I'll take my speed square. I'll create that nice square corner. I'll push it the rest of the way vertically. And then starting at the corner and working my way back again, I'm going to push everything out. Once we have this tape down and where we want it, we're going to start by rolling. That pressure sensitive tape will actually wet to the surface once we have rolled the entire system. Now that our sill is installed and we've rolled it in place, we're able to make a transition and work on the vertical. The vertical seam or the vertical connection from our WRB on our wall, we're going to push to the inside and connect to our rough framing. That's going to prevent any air or water moving in between the connection of these two things. And for that, we're going to use the seam tape. On the vertical, we're still going to overlap everything below it. We're not worried about the horizontal seam that comes in here. We will be concerned with any seams on the head, but we'll, get, we'll cover that when we get there. So to start out with, I'm going to put some layout marks because I like to work cleanly. So I'm going to push a measurement of two inches out. The tape is, the tape's three and three quarters wide. I'm also going to add a small reference mark at the top as a point for when I start this tape and that run to come down. I don't want the tape to go beyond that two inch mark. And we're going to continue and mark both sides. Now we're ready for the tape. I won't pre-cut this because it doesn't have a backing on it. I also am a really big fan of making sure that I complete each step before I move on. So I'll get in the habit of rolling each piece of tape before I move on to the next one. Small slice here to fold in. Small slice at the top to fold in. I like to pressure everything in place with my hand first because if you don't, the tape could actually shift a little. I'll start in the middle and work my way out. It's not a major concern if the stretch tape or your sill pan tape protrudes past the, the sides because they're still overlapping the correct direction. Fold that tape in. Everything will get some by hand pressure to make sure that it's seated in the place that I want it before I roll it. And then again, everything gets pressure. It's pressure sensitive tape. It won't stick long term if you don't allow it to grab by actually rolling it. And you don't want to use your hand as the roller because you won't get even pressure. Now that we have our jams installed, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to address this head flashing. Now this is a tape that isn't required by most window manufacturers or Pella. It's also not required to get your warranty from the makers of the zip system sheathing. However, if we're sealing from this sheathing down to the jam, it accomplishes the same thing that we've done on the sides. It stops an air leakage at that framing member. There are a couple other things that we have to address while we're here because we have a vertical seam in our mock-up. We'll put our line across, our layout line for our tape so that it can be nice, neat, and straight. But here that layout line will also give us a reference for where we should cut that tape off because we want that tape to come down and lap over this in the end. So we'll cut that off or we'll peel it back and we'll have the ability for everything to shingle into place. So again, we'll start with our layout marks. And then I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna go up roughly a quarter of an inch. That'll give me plenty of room to get my tape in there, get it rolled, and then when we add another piece at the end, 
we'll be covering over that. There's one more step before that head flashing tape. We're going to address the joint between our header and our jack studs. And we're just going to simply put a piece of tape that turns the corner. And that tape is going to run lengthwise through the opening. When working with this stuff, my favorite thing to do is lightly tack it to something and then I'm able to cut it. That way I didn't try to reel it out and keep it in my hand. So now I can take this piece, tuck it into the corner, slowly work it in so that it's straight, use my hand again to make sure I like where it's touching. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side before we move on to that head flashing. I'm going to roll those things before I move on to the head flashing. Now I've limited the ability from air inside the opening in the corner to migrate out and in between jack studs and king studs. The last piece of tape. And I'm going to allow that tape to fly a little past my vertical jams on each side, ensuring that I'm covering fully. It also gives the ability to make my cut away from that piece of tape, rather than here, I'm out a little bit. I'll press it in place with my hand, make my vertical cuts. and then fold it inward. Pressing it in place with your hand really makes sure that you're going to limit the amount of air bubbles that you're trapping inside of it or just poor placement. Roll it and we're ready to unpack the window.